Hey everyone, I see this pretty often uh, when doing a digital diagnostic wax up. Your case or your wax up in the in-lab software, you've done everything that you're supposed to do. You've got all of your you know, parameters set to zero. You've unchecked consider instrument geometry, remove undercuts, you've done all that, but you've indicated the wax up as a bridge. After you've virtually prepped or replaced the teeth, you've uh, you've indicated the restoration of the wax up as a bridge. Um, and there's quite the workaround if you wanna, if you wanna design the case or the wax up as a bridge. Um, I designed them as crowns, it's more seamless, and I'll show you guys why. So say you've got your case done, your bridge is done, you're happy with it, you've uh, set the world on fire. Looks beautiful. So what you're gonna do um, as you normally would, is you're going to go into administration, you're going to insert all, you're going to click no. You don't want to consider instrument geometry. So now they're virtually seated. You've got your STL file, looks all sexy and nice. You're going to go to your apps, you're going to go to your in-lab module, in-lab model module. This is going to be a good video, I think. I think that it'll be really helpful. So um, while all this loads, just stay tuned or fast forward, but um, I will show you guys a cool little workaround. I've had to learn all this the hard way, but um, after a lot of trial and error, you get it figured out. Now this workaround will require a mesh mixer. It's just a free um, download. So you see your, your model, it looks all nice and sexy. You're gonna do you know your cleanup. I'm gonna make this really quick because we're gonna end up disregarding this file anyways. Even then, I'm still a perfectionist. <laughs> and some of you may know what's about to happen. Uh, some of you may have experienced what's about to happen, and it sucks. But I'm going to show you guys how to fix what we're about to experience. Gosh, are you serious? Are you guys seeing this? Ridiculous. Ugh. Who has experienced this? Now I know what it is. What's happening is the portion that you want selected isn't as large as the portion that I don't even want to explain it, but that's just so annoying when this happens. Okay, we'll just go with that. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but that's what we'll go with. We'll do the upper two. I would just say disregard it. Well, we're just going to disregard it. Now I'm going to fast forward through this because this can take a long time. And you've got your model, you move into the design, and they're gone. Where'd they go? What's happening is when you virtually see the bridge, um, what's actually happening is the, when you virtually see the bridge, you're creating two STL files. One is for the bridge and each individual pontic, and then one is for the scan. Now when you call your wax up crowns um, when you virtually seat those it's just going to create one STL file where with a bridge it's creating multiple STL files and the only STL file that the in lab model module is going to recognize is the jaw scan so yes 
It's easier to do a wax up as a bridge after you've removed everything because it well, it's easier to move around a pontic, pontic. Uh, however, you're gonna have to do this whole workaround. Now, when you call them crowns, it's a bit more difficult, but you don't have to do the workaround. When you call them crowns, you're gonna have to determine your emergence profile from the get. So you gotta get it right the first time. I prefer this workflow. Um, what I do is I overlay the pre-op scan and I use the emergence of the previous teeth to determine my emergence or where I'm gonna mark my margin. That's just my uh, take on that. But if this happens, I'm gonna show you what you have to do. You're gonna go back into InLab. You're gonna, instead of going into the model module, you're gonna go to export. Let's export this as an STL file. We'll call it test case. Save. Then we're going to go to Mesh Mixer. We're going to open up Mesh Mixer. I'm going to mix up some meshes. Don't restore. We're going to import. Let's go to our test. We've got our test file now. Disregard these. These were um, part of the files for uh, the virtual articulation. So we're going to go to the lower jaw because it was our lower jaw. Open. Generating a mesh. We've got our mesh. Now I'm going to show you what's happening here. When you go to edit, go to separate shells. You can see all these shells. Shell one is the upper jaw. Shell two is pontic, 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 pontic. So these are all um, individual shells or individual STL files, if you will. Now, when you virtually see crowns, you just have one shell. So to make these one shell, let's first disregard what we're not going to use. So we'll just disregard 6 through 13. Because sometimes you get these extra shells. We're going to delete those. And then we're going to... Let me see if I remember this correct. So I don't want to throw you guys off, too. Okay, we're going to select all the shells. We're going to click Combine. So we've got this one shell. Now we're going to go to, we're not done yet. We're going to go to Make Solid. Okay, so we've made it solid, and you can see we've got this, you know, atrocious um, model now. You could you could see what's going on here. To get rid of that, what we're going to do is go to solid type, accurate. We're going to click accurate. Solid accuracy, we're going to take that all the way there. Mesh density, we're going to take that all the way there. I don't even know what these represent. I just figured out if you take those all the way there, it decreases this number, which I would imagine would increase the accuracy. We're going to leave the offset distance, minimal thickness, we're going to leave that, and I think we're going to leave that as well. So this is what we're going to do, just change that to accurate and change these two to all the way up, and then we're going to click update. And you can see it's much cleaner. It's a much more accurate representation of our wax up. We're going to click accept. Now we've got two. We've got the solid version and this shell version. We're going to delete the shell version. Now we've just got the solid version. We're going to export that. Just leave it as binary format. We're going to go to test final. That's what we'll call this bad boy. Accept, save. 
Now we're going to go back into MLab. We're going to close this. Don't save. We're going to go to a new case. Go to test four, whatever. Looks like I've already done a test wax up in the past. We're going to leave this blank. I'm going to go to scan. And I won't do the upper jaw as well, but you would just import the upper jaw, you know, the test upper jaw. But for the lower jaw, we're going to import this test final. Bada bing, bada boo. We're going to now go back to apps. Oops. Okay. We do need to import the upper jaw. Was I thinking? Oh, we have to click low or move into the model phase. My bad, folks. It's been a rough morning. Not as much coffee as I usually have. I've got this new, new uh, creamer flavor for coffee. I'm not digging it, so I just haven't been drinking as much coffee. It's a butter pecan flavor, but it's just not just not having it. So you can see that some of the shelves that we deleted got rid of certain areas that maybe we should have kept. But just for the sake of this video, uh, I'm going to show you that now when we go into apps, model, do you want to save? No. And now, when we have our model, those are incorporated in the design. That is how you create a diagnostic wax up with, um, I wouldn't even know how to say this, but you can, you can create a diagnostic wax up by indicating the wax up as a bridge. You just do have to um, use a little bit of a workaround to get it to create the model. Hope that this was helpful. Ciao.